Hello, everyone. Hello. It's Mr. Harlan. Yeah. It's Mr. Harlan. No, it's, it's the neighbor across the street. I want all your money. Just kidding. Just kidding. It's, it's Mr. Harlan. Welcome to the cabin in the woods. Yes, the cabin in the woods. Everyone gather around this fireplace. Yes, the fireplace. Ah, yes. yes. Today, we are in the U.S. Looking at American highwaymen, or, uh, or as I call them, highway burglars. Get it? Car burglars. Highway burglars. Still working it out, but eh, what the heck. Hey! We will be learning about the Doan Outlaws. Assuming I pronounce their name right. The Doan Outlaws. Also known as the Doan Boys or the Plumstead Cowboys. Were a notorious gang of brothers from a Quaker family. Wow. Here I thought Quakers were nice people. Most renowned for being British spies during the American Revolutionary War. Oh, isn't that lovely? Yeah. They were founded in Pennsylvania. That's where they were at. That's lovely. And they were all American. And who'd have thought? Well, obviously, they're criminal activities were highway robbery, horse theft, oh, and murder. Hopefully it was of British soldiers, because it's the Revolutionary War. It's a war. We're fighting the British. They've taxed us too unfairly. And King George V is crazy. Oh wait, King George the Third is crazy. Crazy, I'm telling you. Now, to the background story of these people, shall we? The Duans. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Some British names I have. Well, any name really I have trouble pronouncing. But yes. They were loyalists from a Quaker family of good standing. To some extent. The Duan boys reached manhood at the time of the American Revolutionary War, growing up in Plumstead, Pennsylvania. The Do Dones, Doans, yeah, this is going to be fun, excelled athletically. The Doan gang's principal occupation was robbing wig, <laughs> wig tax collectors and horse theft. The gang stole over 200 horses from the neighbors in Bucks County that they sold to the Redcoats, oh, never mind, in Philadelphia and Baltimore. The Friends Meeting House's cemetery in Plumsteadville is protected by a field stone wall that runs around its perimeter. Levi and Abraham Doan were buried just outside this wall because the pacifist Quakers refused to bury militants within their graveyard. A veteran of the Civil War is likewise buried outside the graveyard perimeter as well. The graves are adorned with their original native brownstone headstones, which bear no inscriptions following the Quaker practice at the time of their death, as well as newer headstones that identify them as outlaws. Bucks County, Pennsylvania, in 1776. Bucks County, an area sympathetic to the Doan outlaws with a large loyalist population, grew out of William's, William Penn's holy experiment and was guided more by Quaker inner light than by traditional rights of Englishmen. As a result of Penn's effort to create a nation of nations, almost half of colonial Pennsylvania was non-English, and nearby Philadelphia, the elite proper Philadelphians were rich, charming, tolerant, but had relinquished the role of governing the city 
In Philadelphia, by common agreement, was the largest, most cosmopolitan, but also the most poorly governed city in the colonies. Isn't that just lovely? Well, it could have been worse. It could end up like St. Louis, where everyone gets shot dead every day, robbed, beaten up, mugged, cars vandalized, cars stolen, murder every day, fires, like in the fireplace. Ugh. But besides that, Bucks County, when compared to Massachusetts in support for a war with England, was still the peace peaceable kingdom. No doubt Pennsylvanians were outraged by the actions of the crown, but they were most likely to express their discontent through resolutions than violent protests. Many Pennsylvanians remained skeptical about cutting ties with England right up to the signing of the Declaration of Independence. To illustrate this, the fighting in Penn's Woods started seven years after the Boston Massacre. As for the non-English Pennsylvanian, King George III, even at his worst, was better than what they had known in their homeland. Fat Pennsylvania's legendary prosperity helped ease discord. Bucks County could boast rich farmland, large supplies of fresh water, timber, iron, fire clay, game, and their famous field stone for building. The common New Englander, by contrast, had to choose between hard scrabble farming or dangerous fishing off rock-ribbed coasts. In the fall of 1770, Moses Doan left his house in anger after an argument with his father, Joseph Sr. A few days later, he saved the family of, a, of the young girl he loved from an Indian attack, but his subsequent declaration of love for her was rebuffed. Around the time he joined a small band of local Indians of the Wolf Tribe, it is believed that he stayed with them for several months, hunting and engaging in feats of strength with them, which he always won. In 1774, Moses enlisted his brothers Aaron, Levi, and Malan, Joseph, and his cousin Abraham to his gang. A handwritten note by Etta Holloway, a great-granddaughter of Joseph Doan, tells the story of the outlaws this way. They were all of the Quaker faith and did not believe in war. The new government levied a tax upon Joseph Sr., the father of the Tory Doan boys confiscated his farm, threw his wife, three daughters, and youngest son off of the land, jailed Joseph Sr. for non-payment of taxes, and branded him on his hand as a criminal. This was the given reason for the start of the notorious group known as the Tory Dones. However, the Pennsylvania Archives dates the forfeiture of Joseph's, Joseph Doan's home as August 13th, 1782, after the conclusion of the revolution, and ten months after the Doan gang robbed the treasury at Newtown. Oh, God. In July 1776. Oh, my. That's a year to remember. Moses and Levi met with General William Howe and offered themselves as spies. Moses earned the nickname Eagle Spy, in July 1776, most able-bodied men marched off to war, leaving the area unprotected. On August 27, 1776, Moses Doan informed General Howe of the unprotected Jamaica Pass and helped Howe defeat Washington at the Battle of Long Island. And then on December 25, 1776, Moses may have delivered this note to Colonel Rawls' headquarters. Washington is coming on you down the river. He will be here after well, a forlong Doan Colonial Rawl never read this note and Washington kept the element of surprise. He was able to cross the Delaware River with the Continental Army and handily win the pivotal, the pivotal Battle of Trenton. On the 6th 15th of 1778, Joseph Doan Sr. was listed as a traitor, relisted on 
the 11th, 28th of 1783, along with 200 other men, Aaron Doan, Malone Doan, and Moses Doan were listed as traitors. On the 7-30-1778 supplemental list. <laughs> On June 7th, 1780, Abraham Doan killed a woman in her home with her nine fearful children huddled around her. While this while the statement itself is listed in several sources, there is no confirmation of the event, and it's very likely that it could, could have been faked, or never happened. On o October the 22nd, 1781, the Doan Gang robbed the Bucks County Treasury in Newtown of over 1,307 pounds of sterling. This was three days after Cornwallis's surrender at Yorktown on October 19th. The monies were never recovered, or moonies, as they called it at the time. In the next year, the Doan gang is documented to have robbed nine other collectors. In June of 1783, Moses Doan and Abraham Doan and others robbed several Bucks County tax collectors in their homes. A hundred pound reward was offered by was offered for their apprehension, but it wouldn't happen just yet. On July the twenty sixth, seventeen eighty three, Moses Doan, Abraham Doan, Levi Doan, and Malone Doan and others robbed two Bucks County tax collectors for four bucks well, and four bucks citizens at night in their homes. The hundred pound reward was reiterated then. Many, 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 many more robberies would happen. On August 28, 1783, an armed posse of 14 men was formed, and when word was received of the Doan gang's whereabouts, Abraham and Levy Doan escaped, Moses Doan was killed while resisting arrest, one posse member, Major Kennedy, was struck in the back by a bullet from a Doan gun and died from the injuries three days later. On August 28, 1783, there was a note found in Moses Doan's pocket threatening the murder of the Speaker of the House at the time and Patriot Mullenberg if Joseph Doan was not released from the Philadelphia prison. On September 14, 1783, the reward would be increased to 300 pounds per outlaw. And at the time, that's a lot of uh, that's a lot of money. Moses Doan's gravestone was later moved by a farmer and currently lies in a hedgerow in Plumstead Township, badly weathered by the elements over time. As time well went on, it was badly weathered, and now it's very ugly. In 1783, Malone escaped from a Bedford, Pennsylvania jail and made his way to safety in New York City. In 1784, Joseph Sr. escaped from Mouton Jail under sentence of death for murder. Wow, wasn't that just lovely? Joseph Jr. changed his name and posed as a New Jersey school teacher for nearly a year before his real identity was discovered. Joseph Sr. then fled to Canada and was never captured. On May 17, 1787, Aaron Doan, who had been sentenced to hang for outlawry, was pardoned on the condition he leave America and never return. On, 17, on September 24, 1788, Levi Doan and his cousin Abraham Doan confessed to aiding the British and were hanged in Philadelphia for their treachery and robbery. The Doan Myth Moses riding his horse off the cliffs of Fleedsdale Road, today Fleecy Dale Road in Solbury Township, Pennsylvania. Apparently that's a myth that I have never heard of. Never sneak up on a Doan dead or alive. Well, that should be like common sense you never sneak up on anyone even if they're a criminal or not or if they're a witch those were that was the puritan thinking right there never sneak up on a witch 
Mm. Or they'll put a curse on ye. I don't know. Since Halloween's coming up, I figured I'd just do that. Why not? Dare I say why not? Two million dollars in buried treasure. That's another myth. I don't think they would have something like that, but you never know nowadays. The Dones were polarizing figures. Loyalist wrote of the Done gang as if they were Robin Hood. Patriots referred to them as demons. No doubt their success as spies, horsemen, runners, jumpers, their bravery, and their numerous criminal exploits hardened both views. Hmm. Suffice it to say, that's apparently another myth. In, Amer in popular culture today, an American historical drama television series about the Doan Outlaws, American America's original outlaws, is currently in development as of August 2019. It is being produced by Mark One and McNutt. Mark I. McNutt. McNutt's company, Envy Mediacom, is also producing a documentary preview, preview to the narrative series America's Original Outlaws, tentatively titled Outlaw Treasure, Mystery of the Doan Gang. Principal filming, uh, principal filming wrapped up in December 2021, the documentary explores the many Doan legends, including the discovery of a previously unexplored Doan cave and hideout. It is currently in post-production, so we could get this documentary popping out at any different time. Well, given point in time. Oh, well, that's it for today's video. Number vi Video number two will be coming, but for right now, goodbye! And another thing, now if you'll excuse me, I'm off to run away because the British are coming. If you don't hear from me again, it's because the British got me. I need this boat. I must travel through the rain.
I think I'll be safe here. Well. Goodbye, everyone. See you next video.